Hi, my name is Dr. Chris Sovey and I am a physical therapist in Lansing, Michigan and I own Healthy Consumer Physical Therapy. Today I want to speak about a subject that's a little more unique to what's going on right now as of the time of this filming of this video. There are a lot more people working from home for the first time ever or they're working at home more than usual so I'm getting a lot of patients talking about having more back pain than they ever have before, onset of old back pain, those kind of things. So if that's you and you're having back pain that's getting in the way of your ability to function or live your daily life, then you're definitely in the right place. A few housekeeping items before we get started. First, make sure to read the disclaimer in the description below. Never start anything without your healthcare provider knowing. Two, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get more helpful videos like this and also so we can make a bigger impact in other people's lives. Three, check out our blog article if you're somebody that likes to read that's in the description below that I wrote that's specific to this video. And then lastly, if this just isn't quite cutting for you and you feel like you need some more individualized one-on-one -on -one help, then check out our offer at the end of this video. So first, onto the home environment. Now, I could give you a million different stretches for home and it really wouldn't matter much or even the strengthening exercises if you're always using the wrong kind of chair, you're just slumping all day, those kind of things. It doesn't really matter because you're compressing your spine for so long. So I've made other videos that I will put in the description that have complete posture guides. We're not gonna go too deep in this, into that part, but I wanted to remind you of a couple critical things. The summary is always bring the device to you, not your spine and head to the device, okay? So you need to modify your environment however you need to so that you don't have to put yourself in this kind of position for hours on end. A couple things, uh, laptops are the, are the most notorious, right? They're, they're so difficult because the screen is attached, the keyboard, they're, they're all one piece. One thing you might consider is getting a separate keyboard if you are using a laptop at home. Get a separate keyboard and mouse and then elevate your monitor, the laptop itself, up on some books or pads, something to elevate it so you're not having to bring your arms and shoulders in like that. We really want to have that kind of posture where you're able to open your chest, even a split keyboard will, will provide that a little bit better. So being here is never a great thing for prolonged periods of time. The second thing to think about is the best posture is the next posture. It's okay if you're gonna slump sometimes. It's okay if you cross your legs, those kind of things, despite what you've heard. For most people, that's not a problem. It is a problem if you sustain those postures for a long period of time. We wanna aim to have our feet on the floor and then our legs parallel. I prefer that personally that my hips are above my knees because when I put my leg in the traditional position that you'd be in in a chair, then my hip flexors are, are shortened in that position. So if I can elevate my hips slightly above my knees, then I've opened up those hip flexors and it's less stress on your back. So that's something to consider as well. Here at the clinic, I actually have a, a sit-to-stand desk, which have become a lot more popular in the last few years and I think that alternating between the two really helps give you a lot of variety and allows you to move more. Second, if you absolutely must use your dining room table, think about where you are in position to that. I mean it's a lot of times the chairs just really aren't designed and the tables aren't the right height. Maybe they're way too high or way too low which will either put you in like this kind of position where you're holding the weight of your arms up or you'd be way overstretched like this. Neither of neither of which is, is great. So try to have a dedicated space if possible. If you can't, try to get in close to the table, have your elbows supported on the surface and bring yourself under the table and get the laptop or whatever you're using up close to you. If you are using a tablet, make sure that you're, you're elevating it using, there's so many cheap stands out there on Amazon and things now, you can definitely check those out. So make sure that you're addressing this part first because if you don't fix the posture, it doesn't matter what kind of exercises you do. Next up is looking at some movements you can do throughout your day. Now simply just moving more in general is gonna be helpful. So just getting up and down, walking around, doing some simple stretches, those are all good. I wanna show you some of my favorites that I do on a regular basis with minimal equipment to no equipment on some of these. The first is you can use like a kid's ball. This is, a, um, this is called an overball. These are typically used in Pilates. So 
this kind of ball you can deflate or you can get like one of those little kids balls. You can also use, you could sit throughout the day on a uh, large therapy ball. That's another option. But I'm going to show you something that you can do with it that really helps to loosen up a stiff low back. And then I'll show you some things for the upper back as well. So I took that deflated ball and I put it right under my sits bone so I'm sitting right on it. And sometimes I'll even do this while I'm working at, at work if I'm doing some paperwork. You can put it on a firmer chair and then you can get some movement while you're sitting. So the thing I like about this is you can move the pelvis in three planes of motion so the pelvis can rock forward and back. And I, I can even roll back a little bit so it comes all the way up into my thoracic spine. I think of still staying tall through the crown of my head. I don't do this, right? So I could be sitting there working, moving my pelvis, keeping a little bit of abdominal engagement. And then I could also go left and right keeping my abs in, mobilizing my spine that way, getting it moving, getting it more supple. And then lastly, I could do rotation as well, where I'm reaching one kneecap forward and then the other kneecap forward. I was just putting my hands there for more for demonstration. You can always guide your pelvis a little bit as well, getting that moving. None of these should be painful. Okay, if they're painful, then you should stop. You shouldn't continue. Second, if you have a moment to get onto the floor for a floor break, I recommend what's called an articulating bridge. So we're here, and then we just reach the hands down through the fingertips, and then I start to roll my pelvis back and peel each vertebrae away from my spine, or away from the floor, and then we can peel back down going chest, ribs, belly, low back, and then we roll forward. You can add some more variety and variation to that, getting more mobilization of your spine, thinking like a typewriter carriage or a skateboard, gliding left and right as you lower down. You can also zigzag by dropping one side of the pelvis and then the other side of the pelvis until you make contact with the floor and repeat. One of the things that's interesting about the mid-back is it's primarily designed to rotate and side bend. So I find if that area is getting stiff for me, it's much more effective to work in rotation, side bend, and extension rather than just cranking back over a foam roller like you'll see a lot, which is somewhat helpful too, but I prefer this. So you're gonna take your top leg and you're gonna bring it up more than 90 degrees, okay? You're going to take your other leg and you're just going to take it behind you and it's straight. This one stays here. You can take your bottom hand and just hold that there. And then you're going to take your top arm, make sure your head's supported, and you're going to follow it around and you're going to rotate from your spine as you come around in a circle. And then we come back. And I do about six per direction. I also go the other way. I follow it with my eyes, very important. And then I come around. One important thing to note is it's not this. You're not just cranking your arm back and getting into that nasty, like reaching back in the car back seat position. That's no bueno for your shoulder, so don't do that. Instead, follow it leading from your chest bone and get that rotation and then come around. And then you could do the same thing on the other side. Even just five or six of those really makes a big difference. It's very helpful. If you, if you are having a stiff low back, I definitely think knees to chest is a great position so you'd be supported in your head and then we're just going to do some rocking there most of the time though you know if it's truly stiff that's one thing and you can do some of these most of the time though most people are actually just their core muscles aren't turned on the low back is meant to be relatively rigid overall compared to your upper back which would, should be more mobile okay so some of those can be relieving if you've been sitting for a long time though just doing some knees to chest lastly one thing that i really like is hanging and you could do this from a door frame or you could do it from a pull-up bar is even better or just anything that's horizontal that allows you to hang so i'm going to show you that now okay so you could use a door frame or if you have a pull-up bar or even like some kind of uh, supporting cross beam, something like that, those are all really great. But what I like to do is to go feet parallel and then we breathe in and then softly pull the abs in and really reach your butt back 
like you're going to sit deep into a chair there. We don't want the ribs flaring like this. See, that's no good. We've got to connect to that midsection there because then it's going to really go more to your, your mid-back, which is what we want. If you haven't moved much or you're just getting out of bed, like this is a great one to just start with, to start your day because your spine is, hasn't been very mobile, nice and soft. Just make it active, come in and out of it, sitting back, really getting a little bend in the knees there and starting to get the arms up overhead. You can also introduce a little bit of a tail wag for a side bend while you are sitting back. Okay, you can also ripple up through the spine, go into extension, and then sit back again. And then again, it's like I'm sending the knees forward, coming back into extension, really elongate, ground down into the floor, and then come back to sitting again. So some variations there. Some people need more individualized help than what's in this video, and that's why I offer 20-minute free consults where we can go over your goals and see if there's something that you need more on an individual basis. So check the description below and see if you qualify for one of our 20-minute discovery visits. And if, if you found value out of this and you think that you would enjoy these kind of videos, be sure to subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell and like. It really helps out the channel, guys. It helps me to reach other people as well that might be in need during these times of the filming of this video where people are really working from home and they're really not feeling well. So I really appreciate uh, you sticking to the end of this video and I hope to see you again. I'm gonna be posting pretty much weekly now, uh, getting back into YouTube. It's been a long time. I, I know I've been gone for a long time, but I'm excited to be back and I can't wait to see you guys next week. Have a great day.